everyone, and welcome to the June edition of our monthly leadership podcast on Leading His Leaders. I'm your host, Avery Nesbitt. Hey, you know, I know I always say this, but this is going to be an amazing interview. You know, every now and then, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that uh, you guys don't always get to see that tell you in advance that this is going to be a good interview. This is that one. Hey, I am sitting here with Ryan Bailey. He is the founder and CEO of Ryan C. Bailey and Associates. It's an executive leadership coaching firm based right here in Atlanta. Um, it's been all over the world making teams and leaders into better teams and better leaders. So Ryan, thank you for being on the podcast. I'm thrilled to be. This is great. Hey, so listen, we hear a lot about being a better leader and being a, a, a great perform, a high performing team yeah. and a lot of these things. But then when you get into it, you really find that it all boils down to trust. That's right. And so I'd love for you to talk to us today about how do you do that? How do you develop high levels of trust with, with your peers, yeah. um, with those that you lead and maybe even with your upline? Yeah. How do you develop high levels of of trust. Yeah, that's great. So just in general, or are you talking about, let's say somebody already has a team and they don't know that the trust level's there? Yeah, maybe someone who's who's leading a team okay. um, and they're trying to really up the trust yep. levels on their team. That's beautiful. So um, we find that there's two big things that have to be there in order for trust to, to exist yeah. on any kind of team. Um, and this can kind of cut through most of the different scenarios. The two things that absolutely must be there for trust to be developed is there has to be predictability mm -hmm. and there has to be vulnerability. Gotcha. If you don't have both, yeah. the chances of the team really trusting each other tends to not go as well. Gotcha. So like breaking that down a little bit, think of predictability as how well do you really know your team members? Yeah. How well can you predict how it is that they're gonna handle XYZ scenario. Yeah. Or if you guys know that you're working on some sort of issue at the office or you know uh, that you're, depending on the type of work you're doing, whether it's a church or it's a company or, or whatever, something having to do with the, the mission. Yeah. How will each of these people respond when a scenario takes place? Gotcha. And so what we find is in order to develop predictability, it's really helpful to have something like a tool like Myers-Briggs assessment, which yes. is the world's most researched assessment out there. Two million gotcha. people a year take it. We're big believers in it. Yeah. My team's certified in it um, for a reason. And it's just because like literally with just a few like minutes of time, you can get so much information about somebody that yeah. sometimes feels like it's eerily accurate. Yeah. And then on top of it, it's like people are able to understand how to work together a heck of a lot better. That's good. But then the second piece that we find is also really crucial is you have to know each other's story. Because um, in order for you, when you get into somebody's story, you find out more than just their wiring. Correct. You find more about like the whys of different things that are going on in their life. So if Myers-Briggs takes care of the wiring and tells you here's how somebody's likely to handle X scenario, the story will tell you here's especially why they do it this way. Gotcha. And, and oftentimes that's what just makes the magic. It's like, oh, I get you now. Gotcha. And then people just relax, chill out. They can hang out. And over time, as people learn each other's story more and more, they have this sense of really, really understanding one another. And that's where the trust goes through the roof. But then the second piece has to be there in order for that to, to work. And the second piece is, I would include it as part of the story time, which is you have to be vulnerable. That vulnerability. And you have to know how to appropriately be vulnerable. So it's not yeah. about sharing your deepest, darkest secrets to everybody <laughs> right, or anything right, like right. that. You know, no skeletons have to fly out of the closet or anything <laughs> like that. It's more about putting like that red dot on the map and mm. it's just like saying, hey, you are here. Yeah. And so when I'm thinking about being vulnerable, I'm thinking about like, how would I describe where I am right now? And just being able to be real about it. Or if, if we're talking about something and I've got an opinion on it, yeah. but I'm afraid of what everybody else is gonna take think about it. It's gotcha. taking that little bit of risk yeah. and feeling a little uncomfortable and saying, well, I kind of see it like this yeah. and seeing what happens when that happens, you know? So the whole idea is leaders need to be really upping both the predictability and the vulnerability yeah. of a team in order for in order for a team to develop high levels of trust. So we hear a lot of today about vulnerability. Yeah. You know, you've got 
Brene Brown, oh, Brown yeah. out there beating the drum oh, for yeah. uh, vulnerability. And even the wording that you just mentioned there, um, appropriate levels of vulnerability. Yeah. If I'm a team leader, if I'm trying to develop these high levels of trust, um, you know, not my deepest, darkest secret, but how, how do I do that? How yeah. do I nurture appropriate levels of vulnerability? So it's more about taking the risk, right? And it's more about being real. Gotcha. Right? So it's kind of like, do um, is your team aware of how you fail? Mm. Is your team aware of what they need to look out for because it's an area of struggle for you? Wow. Do they know your pitfalls? Yeah. Do they know these things? And and the reason why that's super important is that like what we find when we work with leaders is the higher up in a company we go, it, it gets lonelier and lonelier as you get to the top. Right. Like very few people know these leaders, so they have teams built around them that are really smart teams, mm -hmm. but they don't know necessarily how to cover for each other in a way that a high performing team naturally does. Gotcha. But if, if I'm willing to say to my team, hey, I suck at X, mm -hmm. and somebody says, oh, I'm strong at X, then it's like, oh, I know who I, know who I can talk to about X and, and give that person, give her, give him more of X. Yeah. Um, or that person can help me if I have to do X, how yeah. do you do this well? It, it creates a sense of also humility, which I think is also a huge part to, to the vulnerability. It's, it's, am I willing to be a human being at work? <laughs> that's good. Now that's very different than I would say older styles of leadership where you didn't For sure. let those who you were leading know where your weak spots were. For sure. That That's a, that's a, completely different mindset for sure so we definitely like when we do trainings and we're in different companies like either smaller companies or you know hundred billion dollar and above companies where yeah. we have found at times some resistance yeah but usually the reason why we're brought in is because people already know that they've been kind of screwing that one up right, and they've right. been taking it on the chin a little too often gotcha. and they're ready to try something different they're ready to try something that actually works and we've just seen it work over and over and over again whereas leaders just learn how to get real and they start learning each other's stories and wow. wiring and things like that it's just it's incredible to see what teams do and how like how gelled they get and even though it takes time it's yeah. not going to be like you know the two-week thing right uh, it takes months and months but they, what they see is the steady climb up wow. and for teams or companies that do engagement surveys where they actually rank how engaged people are in the yeah. job it's like it's so clear that within 18 months there's this radical shift that's happened in in that team's culture wow. that you can actually authenticate and you can see the numbers so jump up here's where it started exactly and here's, here's where, where we are here's where we are so for for those watching for those listening maybe they're leaders of big teams maybe they're leaders of, of yeah. small teams but we all have influence in some that's right way or, or another where do you start yeah so i would like literally the safest thing and probably the most fun thing to do is just have your team take Myers Briggs and just Got like it. read each other's reports. Yeah. Kind of, you know, have a good laugh over how you guys yeah. have been trying to force somebody to do something in a certain way that it wasn't really them, or yeah, you're right. or like where you thought they were a jerk, you suddenly realized they were trying to be helpful, and <laughs> right. you know, and in their just, own way. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and they start realizing, oh man, this isn't at all. You know, I, I start. I'm, I'm learning about you. So that would probably be a good first step. A second step would be to spend time getting to know each other's stories. And so, like, mm -hmm. we actually do a training, an all-day training, where we take a team and we have them share their story for, like, 40 minutes each. Wow. But you don't even have to do that. You can literally do, like, a five-minute snippet mm -hmm. of your story and just pepper those in wow. as you're going along. Um, and you'll find that your team will start to respond in kind. Wow. At first, they might think it's a little weird as to why you just told them that in some scenarios. Right, right. But usually people catch on that they're you're trying to let them in and, and you want to be known and you want to know them. And, and so you're looking for, for you know, more cohesion, more trust, yeah. those kinds of things. And you can always talk to your team about how to build trust. I like being more direct about it, you know, like when I'm coaching teams or things like that, and just say, how much do we trust each other right. and rank it on a scale of one to the, one to five? And I bet you find and, out some uh, you interesting find results. Out some, some things, yeah. especially when you first spoke to the leader and they didn't realize the trust level was where it was at. Wow. Um, sometimes they can be a little isolated yeah. from what's going on or 
and so when they learn that and then when we go through these exercises and they see the number jump even in a weekend retreat or something yeah. like that they're really shocked and surprised and pleasantly pleased so there's various different things that can happen it's just it's just starting somewhere starting, starting somewhere. with with especially the predictability or the vulnerability piece and mixing the two obviously goes the furthest so it really can be that simple it really can be that's amazing yeah and once again it's consistency over time mm -hmm. it's not the overnight um we have seen like we've done a few weekend retreats where we saw that number jump significantly yeah and it did sustain but we usually have to keep reinforcing it and keep being vulnerable keep gotcha keep kind of letting ourselves be out there and then eventually it just clicks it just clicks and then people just really trust each other they they just want to be with each other and they become what's known as a high performing team and that's how you become a high performing that's team. like the basic first step so we gotcha. have like 10 characteristics that we how we define high performing teams yeah but all of them basically vibe off of trust if you, you don't, don't have, have that trust, foundational trust it's never going to happen yeah the rest of it's going to be super hard to get right this has been amazing cool thank you sir always i knew i knew i knew it would be great good hey so thanks for stopping by the podcast yeah. um, guys you can always follow us on itunes or stitcher and hopefully something we've said today helps you as your leader is leaders see you